Hey Legionnaires, welcome back. We're here in Middle Earth once again and Balin and his dwarves are here defending against the hordes of goblins that are here to retake the hordes of Moria. So yes, we have a glorious dwarven versus goblin scenario here on Moria with the new uh, updated dwarves. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a, a quick look at some of these new units in action. We do have the Iron Hill crossbows here along with the new look uh, Mansion Reclaimers and Tomb Wardens and a few other units as well. I mean, the Dwarven Warriors as well got a bit of a new look, but you know what? They still act just as well as they usually do. You can see here we've got some goblins trying to get through this little, little gap here in the line. And uh, yeah, they're going to try and get through there. But yes, this is a very, very close battle that uh, is definitely worth watching. Let's hope you guys do enjoy. And if you want to see more Dawn of State action, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and comment to show your support. I do have loads of other cool scenarios planned with this new update with new maps as well. Gives me plenty more ideas for what we can do for scenarios. So yeah, definitely make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these uh, battles that are to come. As you can see, it already got Goblin Blade Warriors wavering because they tried to sneak through this gap here. And they're now getting surrounded and they are in a bit of trouble. Got the Erebor Axe Warriors going in here. They're going to try and carve through these uh, these goblins that try and sneak through. We've got plenty more going in here. These are like nice. These are uh, night raiders going in here. These are like an axe unit. They're okay, but they are light infantry. They are an axe unit, so they've got some pretty high melee attack. Yeah, this was a scenario that we organized on the Discord quite recently. So yeah, if you want to get involved in some of these Dawnless Days scenarios, then feel free to join the Discord. The link is down below in the description of this video. And yeah, you're more than welcome to get involved in some of these battles. Or if you'd want to sit in your own uh, Dawnless Days replays. I'm always looking for more now, especially with the new update that's come out. I'm always looking for some new ones. But yes, as you can see here, the Goblin Scrappers not doing too great. There's a whole pile of them in there. Look at the hordes. Like, there's a thin silver line holding back all these goblins. And they've also attacked on the other sides over here as well. Night Raiders going in against Dwarven Warriors. And we also have more Dwarven Warriors against Night Raiders here as well. But yeah, it was quite it's quite a cool scenario because this is like the, this is the battle that um, basically the the book of uh, Mazarbul um, like mentions. You know, like in the Fellowship of the Ring, when it's like they're coming, you can hear the, uh, the drums or something like that. I can't remember what the line is. See if, I'll see if I can read the, uh, the the line to you. Yeah, the the end comes soon. We hear drums, drums in the deep. They are coming, and then uh, that's what like Gandalf reads in that really dusty old book in the Fellowship of the Ring. Sadly, there's no drums here today, so the goblins uh, need a few drums before we make this... Uh, we make this authentic, you could say. But there are some pretty nasty units uh, that are to come, even if they haven't got uh, drums, they have got an artillery piece back here to the goblins. And outside, I believe, they have, yeah, plenty more infantry, you can see here, along with um, some trolls, some plenty of mountain trolls. I think they've got three, two or three units of trolls uh, to go in. So, uh, yeah, the goblin side with about 11,000 men. The dwarves have about 5,000. So, yeah, it's going to be a rough fight, that is for sure. And already, gaps are starting to show themselves here. Goblin blade warriors are going in um, to try and sneak around this gap here. They're going to be matched by another dwarven warrior unit going in here. Yeah, this is not a good sign. This, uh, this dwarven unit here is now kind of like out of position, could get flanked, and probably will be killed off. This is what the dwarves uh, need to avoid happening, like getting flanked. They're pretty good in just a head-on collision, but as soon as they get flanked, it gives the goblins a chance to actually even up the battle.
they're holding on to a dear life. I think they were getting shot in the back. I don't know what the goblins now shooting at. I think they were shooting at um, crossbows that are over here. Yeah, I think so. That uh, it's not a bad target, but the crossbows can't really exactly get the greatest of angles. So not the end of the world. This thin silver line of dwarven warriors. Hold the line. There's actually iron guards in the front line, as we did see. These iron guards, they're a really early commit from the player here. I mean, they'll get plenty of kills because they're an elite unit taking on, well, this is really cheap stuff. The night uh, stalkers over here. Or the night, I forgot what they're called now. Night raiders, night stalkers. Night raiders, there you go. I don't know if you like the uh, the look of the new Iron Guards. Like, they are very slightly different. You can see like, sort of, like the, the straps and stuff on them. Let me know what you think. Do you think they look different? It looks like we're going to have a Dwarven Warrior go into the, uh, into the fight there. And the Iron Guards can come out. The Iron Guards also have... Um, the Iron Hill units have their, their own Iron Hill emblem. It's very cool. We've got, uh, we've got golden scraps, in fact, starting to break. So it's starting to break, and we're going to see, looks like golden blade warriors going in. The Onage over here, starting to be committed. They're going to start maybe try and fire into this choke point here. Yeah, it looks like that is the case. Trying to hit these, uh, these iron guard as they retreat. Not a bad idea, to be fair. It's good you need to try and go after. This is an elite unit back here. We do have plenty of other units. Uh, that are pretty damn elite as well. We've got some two Mordens back here. Uh, I think they look amazing now with their new like face guard. Look amazing. I really like the new look for them. Instead of the um, like the gold look, these guys look much much nicer. Mantra claimers here as well, which look a, an amazing unit as well. You can see them here again with the face guard going on. I feel like this is a very good look for the dwarves. Makes them just look. I don't know. Just. Just a bit more scary, to be honest. Like, imagine facing like a unit, like a face guard like that. You would, you would think twice about going in. We've got Erebor Halb Deers over here. They don't look too much different. A little different, but not too much different. Um, as well. So yeah, these Halb Deers are going to be very, very key in the fights to come to hold these choke points. Um, but yeah, the Iron Guards have retreated. They only lost ten men. I think most of those were from the retreat. Um, but yeah, he's already got Dwarven units on the break here. Dwarven Warriors on the break. We have got Erebor Axe Warriors now going in. Trying to hold this line, forming shield wall. And the gobos, they've got to hold on. Well, not hold on. They've got to just keep breaking through. The dwarves have got to hold on. Um, I mean, the things they could bring up, they've got lots of pole arms, a lot more pole arms than the dwarves have. Um, and they also have those trolls, obviously. Trolls, certainly down this choke point down here, in this very confined area, could do a really good job, that is for sure. We have got um, another Dwarven unit, actually, which I'll see if I can find in a minute. Um, Erebor Great Axes. That is a new unit, I believe. We'll see how they do in action. They probably will do okay. Shock infantry again, could do quite well in this one, because um, it's quite confined areas. So it's not like the, it's easy to shoot them, unless they come into like these large open spaces here that, where the archers can really do a good amount of damage. Once you get into like, the, the narrow little alleyways, in Moria, it gets really hard to use archers. Just to set them up to start with is a bit of a pain. But yeah, these large open spaces, that's fine for using archers. But to keep the like the goblins in this sort of maze here, certainly works in favour of the dwarves. Because you just don't get the... Uh, like the goblins don't get their advantage of numbers as easily. The only way they can really get their advantage of numbers is with sheer War of Attrition style <laughs> like fighting. Just keep sending waves and waves of goblins in. And eventually try and break through the dwarves. But yeah, see if we can find these arable great axes. I think they're in one of these units over here. And um, we've also got the Aaron Mithrin Veterans, which if you haven't seen the new um, update like video that I did, I do recommend going and checking that out because I do cover 
Uh, quite a lot of stuff, but here are the Elden Myth from Veterans, looking awesome, I think, with their, like, shields in their back, they look great. Um, and then, yeah, here are the Erebor Axe Guards. These guys look great as well, I mean, oh boy, I'm excited to see these guys in action. They are a lower tier than the, um, the Erebor Mithrans, Those, these, like, cost a thousand, these cost a thousand three hundred or something, maybe? Um, and then there are some units, some people have got Dwarven Barrett Guard, I think, and they've got certainly Generals for Dwarven Barrett Guard, because most of the uh, Generals for the Dwarves are unique Generals, and we can't, I don't really want to have them here, since we only have Balin, this is like Balin's defense, um, see if we can find Balin actually, are we being this uh, Mantra Reclaimer unit over here, so uh, yeah, we'll have a look at him quickly, Balin here, defending what he's gained, his own kingdom, there he is, Looks glorious. His big old beard. He's got a big nose as well, actually. Which actually does have, I think, in the uh, in the movie. But yeah, anyway. We'll have a quick look at what's going on in the front lines here. We actually have trolls already been committed. This is very early for trolls. Yeah, these trolls are going in. They need to make sure they like get a good charge and actually get into the fight. The problem is, is the uh, dwarves can't really use crossbows easily to... Uh, to focus these guys down, like having to fire over fights. It's not like 12 12 where you can just arc crossbows. Crossbows still need to direct line of sight in Dawn's Day, so this is making it pretty tough to use these guys. Um, got artillery actually firing, and they're firing onto the um, onto the Tomb Wardens here. They luckily missed every single Tomb Warden there. That was very lucky, but uh, yeah, they need to get those Tomb Wardens out of there. As a sign of things to come, they're going to keep firing on those guys. They're just trying to shoot our elites, trying to weaken them. This is a good idea from the goblins. This thin line of gob of dwarves now is just about holding. There is a gap in the line here of the goblins. Want him to go through. There's a gap in the line here. We could get a unit in column and sneak through and just try and route these units a little quicker. Save a few goblin lives. The goblin lives don't matter. Hold the line, dwarves, for Casa Doom. Yeah, the trolls are in there now. They are actually retreating their swords, which is probably a good idea, actually. Retreat the swords, allow the trolls to kind of get to the front lines and do their damage, really. Yeah, there you go. They're going to swing their big old clubs in, try and do some damage. Um, the goblins don't have access to, uh, like, Olok High. They only have mountain trolls as their uh, only trolls available. It'd be cool if you could add like a, maybe like a smaller troll unit, um, like a smaller model and call it Cave Trolls. Because um, that's what they had in, um, in the movies, you see like Boromir is like, they have a Cave Troll. Cool if you could add that as well. We have more Axe going to the front line here. So yeah, we've got plenty of Dwarves now holding this line here. It's just a, a bit of a sea of silver. And Erebor Axe Warriors are much, much stronger than those Dwarven, Dwarven Warriors. They're just like, as you can see, they're clad head to toe in armor. But I think they're down as a uh, medium axe infantry still. I don't get why. They look very heavily armored for mediums. Look at this guy, he's like just isolated out here. What a brave dwarf. Oh, his friend just got stabbed in the neck. Oh, now he's dead. Rip in peace. They're holding the line for now, the dwarves. Is there anything nasty coming forward? There's shock infantry now in the front lines. We've got Mordor Oryx here. They are breaking through. These dwarves are about to die. Uh, the next line of defense looks like it's going to be a spear unit back here, and they're actually. Going quite a way back. We've got Erebor Spear Guards here holding the line. This should be a unit that could hold back the, the trolls. Um, again, they could really do with either Halberd or Crossbow support. Um, they could do with certainly some of that. And you can see the goblins are now breaking through en masse on this side here. So, yeah, 
what are the numbers so far? The goblins have lost about 2,000 uh, goblins. The dwarves about 1,000, which is pretty good going at the moment for like, ratio for the goblins. Um, and the dwarves, to be fair. It actually is, I mean, currently there's 4,000, about 9,000 goblins left. So in theory, going by that ratio, the goblins should have about um, 1,000 men left. Because they'll lose 2,000 for every 1,000 the dwarves lose. Yeah, simple maths, they'll have 1,000 men left. If it carries on like that, the goblins are going to win. So the dwarves have got to change something around. Um, what? I do not know. But yeah, I'm just... While we're waiting for the goblins to uh, make some more attacks. This is what Moria looks like. If you haven't seen Moria before, it's a very big map. It's one of the biggest um, that we have in Dawn Stage. You've got the, like, the bridge where they have like the Balrog scene, I believe this is. Um, and then you've got like... All the uh, like, like little passageways and stuff that like the the uh, the steps go to, and uh, yeah, there are four Moria maps. There's um, Daradelf, there's um, uh, Barry, um, Azun Azunis Bazaar or something. The one that's out outside, and then you've got uh, Berim Bazaar or something like that as well. Um, so you got two like unfortified settlements, and you have got like this is the this is the city assault, and then you have um, the land battle in Azan Nul Bazaar. Yeah, but Moria, a very, very cool looking map. It really is. For those of you who haven't seen it, there might be quite a few people that are new to the mod. I just feel like I can't show off, like, the small section that we're in, but it is definitely one of the coolest sections. We've got, like, all the uh, dwarven writing on the walls. Like, the details we put into these maps are amazing. Yeah, making progress there. I mean, there actually aren't many goblins left here. The dwarves probably could beat these off. They might need another wave. Yeah, certainly this unit here has not lost that many. They're exhausted, but, um, I mean, that's what the goblins are going to do. They've got to tire out the dwarves. And um, they've been using a lot of ammunition of the uh, goblins as well, uh, which is something that they need to keep an eye on. Uh, but it has been a way that they have been breaking through. They've been doing a lot of en masse volleys, and they've been just, like, focusing down units, and it's been quite effective. Some crossbows, like, back there, there's, um... More uh, two wardens as well. They are uh, just chilling back here, looking like they're going to get try and get some uh, some kills in a moment. Oh, and they're firing. I think they're firing at the two wardens again. Yeah, they need to be careful. They're down to 97 men, so they've taken some hits. Um, but yeah, there's lots of elites back here actually. Manchu claimers. Um, we've got axe warriors. Yeah, they're just going to retreat everything. It's probably a smart idea to be honest. We've got some good units here in the line. Dwarven warriors and iron guard. They'll hold for a while. These archers need to be careful, they still have ammo and they're just going into combat. And there you go, I think the player quickly realizes what he's done there. I like the little setup they got here as well. Um, like a little V formation, they're trying to um, get the crossbows into action. Fortunately, they're not going to really get the opportunity. It seems like the, uh, the archers here are just going to focus these guys down. They haven't killed one yet, but um, they'll be getting through that the armor pretty soon. You can see one is retreating. This guy needs to get out here as well. Like, they've got all of these, like, little passes that they can go up here. It's like, more is just, like, just full of little, like, passages. It's just, like, little nooks and crannies that you can take advantage of. I don't know why he's going that way. He could just climb further up this hill. Here we go. We've got pole arms now coming in, which is certainly a good addition. We've got golden spear warriors here going in. Got more night stalkers coming in. Not night raiders, sorry, not night stalkers. That would certainly be something entirely different. A mass route there going on. There's four units of goblins just routed all at the same time. Now goblin spear warriors are going to just come in and try and do some damage.
But, I mean, the goblins have still got some pretty elite units to come in right now. I mean, they've got snark javelins. They're not so elite, but they're uh, an annoying unit, I guess. We've got more trolls. We've got uh, more halberds back here. There's shock infantry. We've got high chieftain's guards as well. They're the nasty units. I don't know where the goblin king is. He might still be outside this wall. Um, yeah, here he is, actually. The goblin king himself. This is uh, like the only unique unit for the uh, goblins at the moment. Uh, the goblin king. He's got his little crown on. I, I, it'd be hard, I guess, I really have unique units for the goblins. I'm not so really known about their, their race and, like, um, unique sort of uh, characters. I guess it's the guy, this is the Goblin King from The Hobbit. He's a bit of a large chap. Could add him, I guess, if you wanted to. We've got Mordor Oryx here. These guys, you know, loaned out from Mordor. They're clearly like, you need you need some help. Do, we, uh, do the goblins have some Mordor Oryx to help you out? But yeah, these halberds, you know, they're making some progress. Goblin Spear Warriors here, they're actually, you know, damaging these, uh, these Erebor Axe Warriors now. Which is good to see. If you're rooting for the goblins, that is. You're a strange guy if you are. So, who likes the goblins? They're just small, slimy little creatures. Yeah, this dwarven lion is thing out, or being at least forced back right now. We got the artillery still with half ammo coming forward. I think it's going to try and just attack some of the uh, fire on some of these choke points. Um, speaking of the choke points over here, now defended by Iron Guards and Erebor Axe Warriors. They are holding the line for now. These dwarves are all veterans. They've seen action already and having to reclaim Moria themselves. Now they're having to defend it. Oh boy, they're doing quite well though at the moment. Imagine the kills they've got. It must be insane. We've got 4,000 dwarves left against 8,000 um, goblins. I mean, they have actually just clocked under 4,000 now of the dwarves. Ammo certainly is uh, helping the, the goblins at the moment, but they are running low on them. Mountain Pass scouts on their way up now. Artillery coming in as a pretty good hit actually onto the uh, iron on the iron guards back here. I think it mainly hit me hit these dawn warriors, but they did a good job actually. They are gonna hold this choke point here. There isn't too much in the way of goblins left. There is plenty more being sent in now. We've got shock infantry and pole arms being sent in. The shock infantry over here being thrown in by the uh, by the dwarves and throwing in their arable axe warriors. They are uh, active. They are retreating. There's a gap in the line here as well they need to be uh, aware of to the dwarves. Yeah, they did a good job. They pushed back the um, pushed back the, uh, the the goblins. Here we go. In go the uh, the Uruks here. They're going to go in and counter charge. These dwarves are getting slightly overwhelmed. Hold the damn line against these goblins. There's a lot more in here now. There's like a press of them really going in there. Just trying to break through. A lot of them are weakened units, but yeah, they're causing problems. Trolls over here, by the way, have been causing problems for quite a while. Uh, we have actually two Erebor spear guards in here that have um, been fighting trolls. And yeah, they have made no progress. The shock in between in here as well, supporting has also been an issue. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, this has been a real, real problem for the uh, the dwarves. They can't seem to be able to hold back the trolls at the moment. And they are losing a couple, but not many. These trolls seem to be doing quite well. The crossbows here as well can't seem to get the right angle. They seem to... I was trying to move them around and it constantly said obstructed. So I was just like, well, uh, I'll put them on fire at will. If they fire, they fire. If they don't, they don't. Uh, we'll treat them if we need to. And you can see here, Axe Warriors have been beaten back and the goblins are going to be able to break through. But we have reserves on the way up. We have arable axe guards. We have arable spear guards. Everything coming up now. Being committed. These uh, crossbows back here still taking a lot of fire, actually. But yeah, here we go. The spears and the axes going in. And in go both axe units for both goblins and dwarves. They clash in then. The spears going in as well. Oh, it looks glorious. Hold the line! The goblins are starting to make some breakthroughs here. But yeah, what we've got over here, we've got trolls now coming in here as well. And there you go, it looks like they're going to try and break through this... Uh, this Dwarven line here. In they go, smashing away. Wacker. It's not Wacker Mole, it's Wacker Dwarf. And the Iron Guards as well, they'll be a good unit to use to try and t tie down those uh, trolls. Where are those crossbows as well? They need to get those guys back into the line here. Like, they got crossbows back here. Get these guys down here and just start firing onto the trolls like this is literally what they're built for those crossbows killing trolls we've got some more arable axe warriors on the way here and now they're going to hold the line against these uh these night raiders there's a sea of goblins back there still looking to get in here Seems like a lot of their weight is starting to shift this way. They still have a lot of reserves in that uh, first chamber, but yeah, it seems like most of the offensives are coming down the far side. But there is a little sneaky movement going on down here. As you can see, we have got um, the spears and the axes doing pretty damn well. They're trying to sneak around and get these crossbows here. Fire went ready. Firing on the goblins. These goblins need to get moving, but they did just break just like that, and they cause a bit of a chain route. There's multiple goblin units out there. The axes and the spears hold the line for now. You can do it, boys. Hold. This, yes, more shock infantry coming down here. Mordor Uruk has been thrown in. Pole arms, plenty of pole arms going in. And the decision was to pull back these uh, axe guards because, um, well, they're just fighting pole arms. It's not really a good fight for them as such. Yeah, these spears over here are losing. I'll zoom in from this angle. This kind of looks quite cool. Look at the thin little silver line holding back all these uh, goblins and the trolls. Surprised the trolls haven't just barge through now. They could go into the next line, but it is more spears set up here, um, I think. Oh, no, it's not. It's axes now. Okay, so they killed off all those spears and only lost, like... Four trolls, not bad actually, I'd say for the uh, for the mountain trolls. With the support of the um, goblins, of course, that was a massive help. But yeah, there you go, they've broken through. Now it's the axes that have to engage. And they have to hold that line there. Um, it's a bit of an awkward spot to zoom in down there. So I'll, I'll move over to this side, where it does have actually a bit of a breakthrough going on. Looks like those, um, looks like those axes were not beaten back, but they've retreated. I don't know why. They gave up this choke point here, but yeah, the goblins are through now because there's nothing else here. There's pole arms here, but they're also retreating. Um, so yes, you've seen this is a bit of an issue. This is a code red issue here. I mean, the goblins are about to break through, and there's nothing for the uh, for the doors really to defend with, bar one pole arm and some crossbows. So yeah, as you can see over here, there are some doors now being desperately sent in that direction. We have arable axe warriors. We have mantra claimers going in as well. We have the elites being sent in that direction. Look at them, rank upon rank of elite dwarves going in. 
And they should hopefully do some de decent damage. We've got, yeah, we've got more Mansion claims going in that direction as well. Balan himself has seen that it's now time to throw his bodyguard in as well. And there you go. Into battle. Excellent stuff. So yeah, they're going to be needed around there, but there's trolls leading the way. They are, the goblins are going to obviously reach the, the choke points before the dwarves. So the uh, dwarves are going to have to just try and pick up from where the, uh, the defenders over there left off. Because yeah, it's going to be rough. There's going to be multiple uh, goblin units through that choke point before they get there. They just need to hope there's not too many. And then they can somehow close those close the passage off. We actually have high chief things guards now going in here as well. So this is going to make this a much, much tougher choke point for the Erebor Axe Infantry to hold. But yeah, at the moment we just got, um, what is this you know? This is the Halberds that retreated. So they're now fighting just archers here. Don't know why they gave up this choke point. Like, most of the, uh, most of the goblins are out of ammo now. So these guys are actually safe. They're safer than normal. And they're forming some weird... For oh, actually, no, they're just retreating. Okay. But yeah, the trolls are going to get through this choke point. They are going to face these uh, axe warriors. They're close to arriving on time, but unfortunately not. See, the dwarves actually very... Uh, the trolls are very tired. They're nearly at the choke point, which is... Um, sorry, at the cap point, which is one of the objectives for the goblins. And there is a second one over there that they have to take. But yeah, they're very, very close to breaking through there. <laughs> Erebor Axe Warrior is going to try and chase down the trolls. I don't know if the trolls are going to give them the interest of a fight. We'll see. They might do. There are um, swords coming. We've got crossbows as well. This will be really good for killing those trolls. But yeah, the trolls did in fact go in. They've given battle to these uh, Erebor Axe infantry. Will they be able to kill them off? I'd imagine so. Even like very tired, these trolls... Have proven that they can kill like spears and axes off and other choke points. I don't see why they couldn't do it again here. Mm, looks like they're going to pull out this combat. They are winning decisively. I don't know why they just don't stay in there. But I think they're coming after. Um, they're going to go after Balin, maybe? Maybe. There are uh, crosswords. I can see why they want to science them. They have lost a few trolls, and I think it's mainly from just pulling out of that combat. That caused them more damage than good. Because they were slapping up this troll, uh, this dwarven unit for a moment. Got a mantra claims now that they're blo blocking off one of these choke points. And yet yeah, the halberds are back in this choke point here, trying to slow down the goblins. We've got um, Chief Dane's guards here that are just like charging in. I don't know why they just don't go around. They don't need to engage this unit. Um, I was saying to the player that he needs to try and block off this point. Yes, he'll have units the wrong side of him, but we can deal with those quickly. But yeah, he needs to just block off and stop the stop the flood of goblins coming through because there's more Enemy now. Yeah, ready. coming through this choke point. Balin now is in the combat. He's now fighting over here against High Chief Dane's guards, and we'll just watch him for a moment as he battles on side by side with his Manchu Claimer brothers. Yeah, it seems as though the um, Manchurian claimers should should win that fight, I imagine. I I really don't know. I don't think they've changed the stats much with the new luck, but um, Manchurian claimers usually beat High Chief Dane's guards. Mordor Urex, that could be a tough fight for them, to be fair, if they get a good shock charge on them. The Halberds here now surrounded. They are now, like, in the situation that I was saying, they should have been, should have been in, like, surround these guys. You'll kill them much quicker. And these high chief gain, high chief Dane's guards here doing their bit, and you've got a uh, crossbows I think firing um, from the slope. Where are they? Oh, they're up here. Yeah, these uh, arable crossbows firing down, trying to get some good shots. These uh, halberds sacrificing themselves to allow these crossbows to get some pretty decent shots onto uh, elite units here. And 
here we go again. We've got a high chief Dane's guards against mansion claimers. It looks like they're doing just fine. The uh, the trolls are all dead, as you kind of expected. I think they were gunned down by uh, by crossbows and other elite stuff. But yeah, this uh, flank that's now opening up over here is really drawn across a lot of doors. We've got Dwarven Barrett Guard, Eremith from Veterans, lots of Eremith from Veterans actually coming across, and just all now going to be flooded into here to try and hold back these goblins. And they have broken through this choke point here as well, and we have pole arms and uh, Goblin Blade Warriors and High Chief Dane's Guards ready to go in. There is a spear unit waiting, and I uh, I pushed it out. I decided that I thought, wait a minute, this is a pole arm unit coming in first. If I kind of get the right angle. Then um, I can attack on the flank, and then my uh, my allies here have got some reinforcements that can just also hit it in the flank, and we can just kill this spear warrior. And look at that, I get a pretty good angle to charge into the side of these guys. And then my ally can also just flank these uh, goblin spear warriors, and there, that's this goblin spear unit. It's not out of the game, but it's in real trouble. Yeah, you can see... Out of position, they're going to retreat. They're going to lose a decent amount of goblins doing just that. And now the, our infantry can scrum with these high shooting guards. On this far flank over here, it seems like uh, they're still holding on. Still gonna, well, not holding on, but you know, still fighting on here. The trolls are all dead down here. And now there's Eremith and veterans going in with Erebor Axe infantry. And they can just scrum it out in this choke point here. It's a narrow old show point what makes it look so great this is why I like more it's just like narrow little choke points it's annoying to fight on if you're the attackers but if you're the defenders because of the um I don't know I feel like you really like get into sort of like the uh the feel of like you're actually defending the halls of Moria like, quite nicely it's quite a nice little uh feeling it feels a bit desperate as well because you are vastly outnumbered um, though numbers are shifting in favor of the dwarves it's now 2600 versus 4,100. Spears are holding here. There are archers in combat now. We've got Mordor Oryx in there. The uh, the reserves in this choke point here, there isn't much left. There's just some trolls. Uh, I don't think there's anything outside anymore now either. I think everything has been committed inside. But yeah, so it just seems as though these, um, look at this, the High Chief Dane's guards well getting bested because these uh, Erebor Axe Guards have been sent in. The Chief Danes are losing there, and I mean, they're being forced back slowly on this side here. We now have the Hall, uh, not Hall Guardians, and um, the two Mordens, sorry, in there. Certainly not any Hall Guardians here. It'd be strange if the Wooden Realm was here defending the Halls of Moria, that is for sure. They look great. I love the new, like, capes they got going on as well. Look, makes them look very regal. Killing off these uh, Goblin Spear Guards. Two ones retreating bizarrely. I don't know why. I mean, they were losing, I guess, but not that much. They should have just kept them in there. They're, they're fine in there. So we're breaking through on this side here. Manager claim is making good progress here. And their white cloaks kind of remind me of like Praetorian guards. It's like Praetorian guard with their white cloaks and stuff like that. That's, don't know why. Hopefully they're not as bad at killing uh, their own their own officers, their own uh, commanders-in-chief. 
as the Praetorians were. But uh, yeah, the Mantra claims over here, they're surrounded, they're dying, unfortunately. Goblin King has been committed to try and kill these guys off. They're actually making progress back down this, um, back down here in the choke point. They're actually like fighting on here again, trying to uh, slow down the res like the, the time that the, the goblins can set up more reserves. Here to try and help break through here. This is all just slowing down, like little things like that. We can see here we've got Herbal Crosswords as well winning in combat against, I think he's against Mountain Pass Scouts. Expect no less really from the Crosswords, they're much more heavily armored. And yeah, now we have these uh, Goblin Spear Warriors able to go in against the Hall Guardians here. They should really be an easy win for the Hall uh, Not for the Hall Guardians, two Wardens. I keep saying it for some reason. I don't know why I've got it stuck in my head. Probably because the last battle we did was a Woodland Realm one. It seems so long ago now. These guys look awesome. See if we put the shader on for them to see what she see what it looks like. Which side's no, yeah, that's the darker side. It's like here, let's see if we put the shader on what happens. Oh! These guys look pretty good. I do like the look of them. There we go. They do look very, very cool. They look epic, actually. There you go, we'll go back to uh go back to normal vision. Got air myth from veterans now in here. They are fighting against pole arms and stuff like that, but they seem uh, this doesn't seem to phase them at all. It's, you know, they actually are losing though, so maybe it is phasing them. We've got Baal in here that looks like he's going to get committed against uh, High Chieftain's guard himself. And um, there are crosswords here that could maybe support if needs be. And yeah, there are all breaking units here as well, which certainly is going to be helping the situation. Javi's here trying to execute this tomb warden, which is a sad sight to see. That is for sure. Like, this is what's so good. These Javis are actually, like, they're cheap, but they're very useful. Like, you can get really good kills on things like this. You just got to use them right. Jeez, oh, yeah, this 2 one's been absolutely annihilated. That is brutal to see. Oh, my gosh, down to eight men. They are still holding, but just, oh my gosh, that was an execution and a half from the Snagas. Really nicely done there. And now there's a breakthrough. They can break through once again. There isn't too much left. The goblins have uh, 1,000... Uh, no, sorry, the gob goblins have 2,400. The dwarves have 1,900. The goblins are actually being forced back in a few choke points themselves. In the main um, in the main area here, they're actually being forced back. We've got Barrack Guard charging in along with some Erebor Axe Warriors. They're breaking a few little uh, archers here. And they're just going to fight it out there. There's still the main choke point over here. There's more trolls over here that help... Um, route the dwarves. The dwarves are now way back down here in this choke point here, waiting the for them. Patiently, we've got Erebor Axe Guards, Erebor Axe Warriors all waiting. A general's dead, so there you go. So that's um, a Hive Sheeting's guard just being surrounded by. It's like Bile in here and also some more Mantra claimants just getting surrounded and killed off. And that might start to cause some chain routing if he's got any more extra troops. Bile in there, you can see him still fighting a good fight. And these halberds, as can see, they need to get in a little bit more, but you can see here crossbows as well. Um, just focusing down. And yes, yeah, start to be a lot of wavering here. Look at that mass route starting to take place. And now the dwarves, I think, have the balance power in their favor. Yeah, it's 1800 versus 1300, and it's dropping pretty quickly as well. Yeah, you can see as well on this side of thing. Who's this? The Goblin King has been forced back. He's got a lot of men left. Goblin King has 150 men left and he's broken. That's insane. What happened there? Is it just because the loss of the other general? I don't know. Or was the army losses for him? His army? Perhaps? He's a Goblin King. He's pretty. He's an elite unit. I'm surprised by that. That is really surprising. Okay, the dwarves are pressing on now. They're also engaging the final general over here. In this choke point, he's actually... Been a, a bit of a rear guard as soon as the dwarves are trying to break through. You realize what he had to do was defend this pass, and now the goblins are the defenders almost. And there you go, you can see these uh, Arab, these Arab troops over here starting to uh, surround and 
kill off these Goblin Spear Warriors. And one glorious charge from Balin should route the lot of them. Hold the line, Dwarves! Balin's coming! Here he comes, smashes in. There should be an easy route there. He's actually in the front line. He's going to get a kill. Oh, he does. Kicks that guy in the face. It's an insane way to kill a man. I mean, to be fair, he's got some pretty heavy boots. He probably would kill a man or a goblin. These uh, archers won't last much longer. And then it's just, I think, a few units over here. This is actually still... Uh, the goblins are still making, like, successful pushes over here with their trolls. They're still, like, causing all sorts of issues here. Um... And now the goblin, uh, sorry, the crossbows are starting to fire now. So yeah, it's unfortunately, pushing forward has only meant that the crossbows will actually operate. Oh my gosh, this choke point is awful for camera angles. I do apologize. But you can see down here the uh, the trolls battling away. Oh, dying on the on these uh, steps, slipping down. It's a sad way for them to go. Yeah, there's been a constant problem with this choke point. I, I honestly said at the beginning of this battle, I doubt they'll push much down here. They actually push more than I thought down here. Because it is a really annoying choke point to fight and try and take. Um, I think that this choke point here, then followed by the one that I was mainly defending, are the toughest ones for all the goblins to try and fight down. But yeah, down here, um, and like when you get into this area, it's a bit more easy for the goblins. I, I personally think. But yeah, look at the dead in these choke points. Like an insane amount of dead here. Insane amount. Um, this one's this is a decent pile over there as well. I mean, yeah. Nuts, and you got the pile here as well from the initial fight. Lots and lots of dead there. Yeah, it's been a mad, mad battle. And that, I think, is the final general that's getting routed there. And I think that is going to be the battle because the, uh, the final units over there routing. And there you go, a Pyrrhic victory for Erebor. We'll end the replay and have a quick look at the end results. Um, so, yeah, this was sent in, um, well, well, sent in by me. Uh, I was the one that, that created the scenario. Um, we, we did a fairly, fairly decent job, to be honest. Um, I mean, we had a, not many men left, but yeah, I, my army's basically finished. I had some Erebor Axe Guards and some Crossbows and Barlin that were healthy. Um, but yeah, we got some amazing kills there. Barlin getting 300 kills and still healthy. Dwarven Warriors getting 196 kills. We've got Erebor Axe Guards with 317, 313 for the Axe Warriors here. 316 for Arid Mithrim Veterans. 325 for another Axe Unit there. The Spears getting 140 kills. My Crossbows getting 70. Then we have Kaiser of the Germans playing as another Erebor army. 615 kills for an Erebor Axe Warrior. Insane. You've got Dwarven Warriors here with 320, 485 kills. Manchu Claim is still healthy with over 100 kills. His uh, Iron Guards with over 400, nearly 500 kills there. Uh, Tomb Warden's getting 123. Kind of a bit disappointing, but did okay. And his Crossbow is 495 kills. I don't know if that's really from Crossbows or from just in fighting. Then we have um, Sharp here. Playing as the final Erebor army. 262 kills with the Dwarven Barrack Guard General. Um, his sword's not seeing so much uh, action. Only getting 160 kills. 190 with the Mantra Claimers. Uh, 247 kills with the Erebor Veterans. 299 with the Axe Warriors. 266 with another one there. And his crossbow is getting 177. Then we have K-Player playing as one of the Goblin armies. Did a pretty good job. It was one of his first battles. I think he said he'd ever played for Dawn's Days. So yeah, he did okay to be fair. And... It's a tough fight for um, any, any player, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, so we'll have a look at his uh, unit, his results quickly. 120 kills with his Goblin Blade Warriors. Not bad against Dwarves as well. Um, Halberd's down here getting 96 kills. There's not, again, not too bad. Trolls getting 102. Arch is getting 100 kills. It's High Chief Dane's guys having a bit of a rough time there. They're Mythic playing as one of the other Goblin armies. 200 kills with his Mountain Trolls is very, very good. Halberd's getting 67. His Snaga Javi's getting 102 kills. Um, 86 kills with the Blade Warriors. Uruk's getting 68 kills. Um, yeah, nothing too insane for the Uruks there. 90 kills for another Uruk unit here, though, from Fjord. Um, we've got 90 kills for the uh, Goblin Heavy Archers. 102 for his Spear Warriors. Um, 81 with the Chieftain's Guards. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty tough to kill the Dwarves. I mean, 86 with the Onagers, not too bad either. But yeah, it's tougher to kill Dwarves. And they're smaller units, so... Um, yeah, they don't have as insane kills as, say, like, the, the, the Dwarves, who've, like, got to kill much larger and easier to kill units. But there you go, guys. That is today's battle. Balin did successfully defend Moria. And yes, he will reign on as Lord of Moria forevermore, it seems. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye for now.